Hello, my name is Christian Zinser, and I welcome you to this Genomatics webinar on comparative promoter analysis. A few technical things before we start. I will take questions. Questions can be entered into the questions box in the GoToWebinar control panel. And um, I will answer them at the end of the webinar um, if we have time and any questions I cannot answer in the allotted time, I will answer per email after the session. First of all, I'd like to start showing you a few introductory slides and then I will give you an overview in the program itself. So, comparative promoter analysis with genomatics. What is on offer, actually? On the one hand, you need program to retrieve your promoters or also other regulatory regions enhances. We have uh, the Eldorado comparative genomics view for that. Eldorado is our uh, genome annotation database and you can access it via an interface. Then we have uh, the gene to promoter program which allows you also to include orthologs of a gene and also the orthologous promoter for comparative analysis. Then we have the genome browser, which you can use to identify potential other regulatory regions um, which you do not find automatically with gene to promoter And um, this um, includes a number of different types of uh, support for potential regulatory um, regions. And lastly, there is uh, orthologous regions, which is a program that you can use to find the orthologs for actually any genomic sequence. So, for example, a genomic sequence that you identify as a potential enhancer using genome browser and then get the orthologs for that. And for the actual analysis of uh, your sequences, we have three different, sorry, three different programs here. One is called Common TS. It's a very straightforward program that just gives you um, the common transcription factor binding sites in a set of input sequences. Then we have uh, DialNTF, which does first an alignment of your sequences and then gives you the common transcription factors in the aligned regions, more stringent than common TFs. And lastly, there is Frameworker, which you can use to look for common patterns of transcription factor binding sites. A few more details on the different programs here. Well, Eldorado is the, uh, well, the basic annotation that we have and uh, some of the key features of this um, annotation um, are listed here. For one, the transcripts which are um, certainly necessary to find the corresponding promoters come from RefSec Ensemble and from GenBank and we have a consolidated list with, with where we um, remove any duplicates um, which are the basis then for the promoter annotation. And this promoter annotation is based on the transcription start site of these mapped transcripts um, on uh, the genomic sequence. In addition, we have information about uh, potential promoter strength uh, based on cage text that we retrieved from the Phantom 5 um, projects. This is tissue-specific um, expression of the transcripts and from this you can deduce um, which of the promoters of a gene will be the main promoters um, in a specific tissue. It also integrates information from ENCODE, chip sequencing uh, data, and also um, genomatics chip sequencing data um, for um, transcription factor binding. And lastly, uh, the orthologous promoter sets, which are based on comparative genomics, were generated um, and uh, included in Eldorado. Gene to Promoter is a specific program for retrieving promoters of several genes for comparative analysis. You can actually um, analyze up to 1,000 promoters. Uh, you can include the information on orthologous promoters for the study of evolutionary conservation and uh, you can set a promoter length up to 3,000 base pairs. And the programs that you can use for analyzing your promoters are directly linked into the output of gene to promoter so that you can directly start with a specific set of promoter which you selected. 
In the genome browser, you can identify candidate regulatory regions. So we have the genomic annotation element from Eldorado in the browser. We have, uh, well, a number of different lines of evidence for enhance or promote the prediction. This includes functional prediction based on epigenetic marks, and it includes also data on transcription factor binding on open chromatin and on conservation of the um, sequence, so which is just shown in an example here in this figure. The program orthologous region is used, as I said, to find orthologs for any genomic region. For example, enhances. It uses both synteny information and sequence similarity information to find the orthologs. And it can also be used to complement promoter sets in case where maybe um, a promoter has not found its way into a promoter set. This orthologous regions program can aid you. And you can also start the comparative analysis directly from the output. Now, for actually running the comparative analysis, we have for one thing here, the common TF, where you can um, set a user-definable quorum, so how, in how many of my input sequences do I actually have to find the um, match for a specific binding site type in order to include it in the output. What you get out of that is independent of the position and the orientation of your transcription factor binding site matches. So a binding site can be somewhere at the start in one promoter, it's somewhere at the end of the promoter in another one. It can be on the plus strand or on the minus strand. It's, so it's not very selective, but it allows you to do your own manual selection then um, afterwards. And you can do this selection easily in the graph by um, selecting specific transcription factor binding sites. Then we have Dialine TF, which does a multiple sequence alignment and shows you the conserved transcription factor binding site matches. Again, you have a quorum here that you can set. And uh, this additional filter for getting the matches only in the aligned region increases certainly the stringency and the selectivity compared to the common TFs programs. Uh, program and in addition you also get information about the sequence similarity in the region where you have transcription factor binding sites as you see them here. And lastly we have the Frameworker where you have an automated identification of patterns of transcription factor binding sites which are common to your input sequences and these patterns may represent functional regulatory modules. Again, you can set parameters including stringency parameters for the, uh, for the pattern search and you can save uh, the patterns that this program finds for further downstream analysis. You see such a pattern outlined here and you see it in consisting actually of three different transcription factor binding sites which are very similar. So the pattern is very similar here in the different promoters that we have in the different organisms. Okay, so much for the introductory slides. Now let me show you the program itself. We have here the Genomatics Software Suite User Interface and I'd like to start actually with an example where I show you uh, gene to promoter followed by common transcription factor binding sites and um, this uh, program can actually be found here under genes and genomes we have the gene to promoter program and you can select one of two options here for the interactive analysis you would use the first option the second option is actually for downloading larger higher number of uh, promoters so I take the first one here and I enter a keyword here I just look for the IL10 gene which is a regulatory cytokine and let the system give me the promoters and for the um, 
analysis of orthologous promoters, I need to check this option here, additionally list orthologous genes in the output. Now this gives me a list of the promoters. Now starting here from human, we have the promoters here and all these three promoters are actually in promoter sets as you see them here, promoter set one, three and two. And here we have the transcripts which are controlled by the promoters. In addition you have the promoters from the other related species listed down here, down to the some birds that we have in the system. Okay, now to select which of the promoters are actually um, interesting, you can use information from um, Phantom, which I mentioned, and um, this can easily be done by clicking on a link here for the transcripts, which are regulated by the promoter. And uh, you see here, this promoter is uh, regulating a coding transcript. This promoter is regulating two non-coding transcripts. And the third one here regulates, again, a coding transcript. Now, if I select, the, want to see which of the two promoters actually um, uh, regulating a coding transcript is the stronger one, I can click on the GXT link here. So this is a link to the a page for the transcript in El Dorado. And this shows me the expression in tissues based on cage tags. The number here is the number of cage tags that have been found um, coinciding with um, the corresponding transcription start site of the transcript and are a, a, um, a measure for the strength of the expression. So we find that we have over 7,000 tags here in blood, which is pretty strong. On the other hand, if we look at this one, This is much weaker expressed. We have only 11 tags in blood, and uh, this goes down here, so it's sorted actually by the number of cage tags. So we know that this promoter is the most important one, and we see that promote set one is the set it belongs to. You see that we have promoter set one also here, for example, in the rhesus monkey or here in the in the chimpanzee and in um, several of the other species. And I can easily select only promoter set one by scrolling down here and selecting it from this list. Now only my promoter set one is selected and I can directly um, start an analysis from here or I can save the, the um, promoter set if I so desire. To save the promoter sets, you can select among different formats. You can also change the length here. I will continue with a standard um, length, with it, which is approximately 609 base pairs for most of the promoters. But you can go up to 3,000 here. And here you have a number of different options for doing the comparative analysis uh, on your promoters. And I will start with a common TS here and run the selected task. One thing here that you need to do before um, you actually get the result is um, you set the number of parameters here. Um, just point, just want to point out two of them, um, the matrix group, so in which of our um, binding site definition groups actually do we want to see. Um, you get the correct, the correct groups by default here, this would be the vertebrate group and uh, the general core promoter elements group which includes Tata box and a few other uh, general core promoter um, elements. And you know, what's important is down here you have a, a quorum um, so you can tell the program that you want to see only those transcription factors binding sites which are common to at least what you see down here. And by default this is pretty stringent and we can use um, this default here 11 out of 12 to continue.
Okay, so the most impo important part of the output that you get is uh, the graphical view with an overview of the binding sites in the promoters. You see the promoters listed here, starting here from human down via mouse and rat, etc. And the binding site matches are shown as colored blobs here on the, the on the plus strand and on the minus strand. The transcription start site is outlined here as a, or shown as a, a bent arrow. You might have several transcription start sites in one and the same promoter, so you get several um, arrows. And uh, on the left, uh, sorry, on the right-hand side, you have uh, the matrix families that are present in your promoters. You get the list of the matrix families which uh, fulfill the quorum here in black. You see it down here to XBBF, sorted alphabetically, and the other ones which are um, not present in enough of your input sequences are just listed here in and, and, and grayed out. Now in common TFs you can already see some well similarities in the patterns of transcription factor binding sites. For example, here you see a, this blue one here. If you um, just mouse over here, it's an XBBF binding site, which also occurs here. And uh, this green one here is a MyOD binding site, or you have a, a forecat binding site here in a, a magenta. And you can also um, just select and show um, specific binding sites by deselecting all, everything here and ju then just um, selecting the, the specific binding site. So if we start with the XBBF here, the, which we already I already pointed out, you see that we have well several matches um, in each of the promoters, but we also already see that this seems to be seems to be um, conserved in one way or the other, or we have um, if you go down here, we have a stat binding site here as well, which is conserved. Another one may be conserved here. Or the MyOD binding site, which I pointed out here. This one is very strongly conserved, but also downstream a bit here and also here. And the 4 cat binding site, well, there's also some conservation here for, of a few of the sites for, for 4 cat You see that uh, some of the promoters here are shorter than the other ones, and you can um, you can drag them around if you want to see the relative positions to the transcription starts as here um, aligned um, in the graph. So if I just um, deselect everything here and um, click on the on the first entry, which is the Tata box, you see the many matches here are actually where you would expect them at uh, well, bit upstream actually of the of the transcription start site, and two more here, ABDB and AP AP1R. Um, we see that okay, the the alignment um, could be better if we just get uh, the rest of the promoters over here. So we can just enable dragging and drag the whole thing. like this and the other one here. Now you see, okay, the, my ABDP site, where, which is um, conserved here, is also conserved here down here in the monodelphis and the, in the um, lab opossum. And my AP1R site, which is conserved here among a number of different different organisms is obviously also conserved here um, in the, the in the platypus. So down to the um, relatively far um, far away uh, related um, species. Okay, so um, you also can save this uh, graph in different formats as a PNG or as a, a JPG file, which will also just be shown here in the in the, the your genome in your browser, and you can just uh, then co uh, download it from um, using your browser functionalities. And you can also change the 
quorum rules in the graph without the need to go back and restart the analysis. You see the quorum rule down here it, uh, is, is here at 11 and um, you can use this um, for example if you know from experimental data that a specific binding site, a uh, specific fact actually binds your promoter um, and um, but it's not as heavily um, conserved or as strongly conserved um, as, you, uh, as you get here from the start, you can change the number of sequences that you want to see your binding site in. For example, um, Matt Inspector would give you the information that Run X3 can bind this IL-10 promoter and uh, it also would give you the information that the binding site for Run X3 is called um, HAML in our system and this HAML um, site is not shown here in this list but it's somewhere um, down here. So you can just um, decrease the quorum for example to one and this will then give you the complete list to select from and here we have HAML in here and we see that um, the binding site and a binding site for HAML is um, for example conserved here and it's actually conserved in 10 out of 12 of these input sequences. And you can also use um, a filter here, the matrix similarity filter to increase the stringency of the search um, for the binding sites so that you get only very strong binding sites. If we go back here to 11 and um, select CREP binding site. Here we are. We see that there are a number of binding sites in the human promoter which seem to be conserved up to a certain degree and we can increase the stringency of the similarity threshold um, step by step. So this is increased by 0 0.01 and you see that some of the matches actually vanish and if you go up to 0 0.05, only this one is actually left. So this would be the strongest match for this uh, CREB uh, binding site in the human promoter. And it's also very nicely conserved, as you can see here. Okay, so much for the program common TFs. Now, common TFs is nice if you want to um, well, give the uh, let the uh, the program just give you an overview and um, want to look around and um, work based on the well on 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 a relatively low um, stringency um, search for common uh, transcription factor binding sites. If you want the pro a program that um, is more selective actually than that, then you can use the program Dialine TF and I will show you this in the next example combined with uh, the comparative genomics view in Eldorado actually. So first of all we will open an Eldorado search which you find here again for IL-10 so that we see the difference to get out of that. So as I said, this Eldorado is the central gene annotation database and in, El, in the Eldorado user interface um, you can search for one gene and retrieve all the annotation information that we have for it. You see different links to the different views of um, the um, IL-10 locus here and um, this uh, is useful if you want to jump quickly between these different views. For example, you want to look at uh, the um, gene locus in the genome browser um, or you want to quickly um, go into the more gene info view to get, an, uh, to get access to functional information on a gene such as um, which other genes it interacts with. The view to actually get the promoter sets for a comparative analysis is called well, comparative genomics. 
And uh, this view is equivalent to what you get in Gene to Promoter if you input one gene and uh, select the orthologs option as I just did. The same as before, same structure actually, we can select the promoters at one. Down here. And now I use uh, this program, Dialine TF, to run a comparative analysis, including an alignment. Now, just uh, point out a few things here. Well, display of alignment, I'll change that to 100 nucleotides per line so that we get can use the width of the screen here. Again, we have the matrix group. And um, what's important down here is the transcription factor binding sites. Um, by default, only the transcription factor matches located in aligned regions are shown. You can change that to common TF matches or all TF matches, but then it wouldn't be any different from what you get in common TFs. Again, we have a quorum. And um, due to the increased stringency, I need to uh, lower the quorum a little bit. So we had 11 out of 12 for common TFs. I now um, lower it to 10 out of 12 so that we get a few uh, matches here. But you will see that it's uh, by far not as many matches as you get with the common TFs task. Okay, so in the output, we have a list of our input sequences, including the length. And then we get the alignment, starting here with the human, down rhesus monkey, chimp, etc., down to the platypus. And here we have a list of the transcription factor binding sites that are common in aligned regions. You see that uh, 10, all in all. And um, you scroll down here, as they are shown in the here in the alignment. And the first the first entry that we get here, the, which is at about in the human sequence at position 300 and well 80-ish or 90-ish, is a CEBP um, binding site. This corresponds, if you go back to the common TFs here, um, just have to go back here to include it. So this would be this CEPP binding site at position 387 to 401, which is a conserved uh, binding site. You see, apart from this binding site for CEPP, we have a number of matches, also some of them conserved. If we use the common TFs, but we get only one um, of them if we use the dial line TF. You also see the, um, the um, sequence conservation shown with the asterisks below um, the alignment. So a maximum of 10 aster asterisks would show you that you have maximum sequence conservation. And um, if you scroll down a little bit here, here is an example where we have, well, we have, do have sequence conservation, but we only get four asterisks instead of the maximum 10. Um, and But we do have a nicely conserved stat uh, binding site. So um, in this way, we can get also um, regions where the functionality is conserved very well, um, but the sequence it itself is maybe not so, um, so strongly conserved. Okay, now for the last example, I would like to combine a search for orthologous regions with framework actually and before we can search for an orth orthologous region of some sequence in uh, the genome we first have to define that sequence certainly and um, I will show you an example where we find a potential enhancer in the vicinity now of the IL-10 locus using um, the genome browser and the information that we have in the genome browser then run an orthologous search and then 
um, do a comparative analysis using framework. For this, I can go back to my Eldorado overview page here and just open the Genome Browser. which loads the graph now for the IL-10 locus. In the genome browser you have a number of control elements. You can zoom in and zoom out also using your mouse wheel like this and you can show the transcripts in the locus which are in this track one by one by clicking on this arrowhead here at the start of the track. So we have two coding um, transcripts in this locus shown by the black structures here and the two non-coding transcripts <clears throat> are outlined here in, in white so in uh, no filling of the, of the boxes. And uh, for potential enhances. We need to add a few more tracks. You see the promoters here in yellow. This one is the one that we just analyzed. Here is, uh, sorry, this one is the one that we just analyzed. Here is another one here for this for this longer transcript, but this transcript is the, tr uh, the strongest one um, in the IL-10 promoter. Now for getting information about uh, potential enhances, we can use this uh, button here for adding tracks and this will open a dialog and in this dialog we have a number of uh, additional tracks that we can show. Here on the bad file tracks in public we have uh, different sections, chromatin states, so this would um, give us information about the prediction of, uh, of enhances among other things. ENCODE data, transcription factor binding sites and a few others, Con evolutionary constraint elements, regions where we have evolutionary conservation and also CHIP-seq data that uh, we um, collected here um, at, at Genomatics. Let's start with the chromatin states. The data come from this uh, Jason Ernst et al. paper in 2011 in Nature and I would like to show you one example where we have um, an enhancer in the lung, in an NHALF cell, so that's short for normal human lung fibroblast. And um, here in this uh, lung tissue we have uh, strong enhancers and I'll just click here to show the region where this, where these enhancers, so where the enhancer is predicted and this is predicted based on a combination of epigenetic marks, mainly histone um, modifiers, modified histones and you see that we have a downstream of the IL-10 locus which is on the, on the minor strand so the promoters start here and the transcription goes to the left. Downstream we have a an prediction of a strong enhancer. So but that's not the only thing that we can use here. We can in addition, get information from ENCODE as to DNAs1 hypersensitivity sites. Again, if we go to the lung, we get this again in NHALF. So this would mean open chromatin which can be promoters, which can be sites of transcription, which can also be enhancers, which are active and accessible. You see we have open chromatin obviously here. And then we have evolutionary constraint element. Actually two different ways to, to, um, to calculate prediction of constraint elements both from the same publication Lim Plateau et al. in 2011. I'll just show you the second one here. Now this predicts conserved sequence in the center region here of this um, enhancer region. 
And in addition, we also have transcription factor binding sites, which we get from ENCODE. And here I just show you the super track with all of the transcription factor binding sites super imposed so that we see that um, we have regions for a number of different transcription factors that um, can um, bind here based on chip sequencing data. So this is a pretty nice candidate. In addition, we also have a transcription start region here based on cage tags, which uh, could um, actually be um, enhanced transcription, which is a, one of the well hallmarks also of, of active enhancers. So this is a pretty good candidate for actually being a functional, a functional enhancer. And uh, so how do we now do a comparative analysis for this region um, here? We need to get the orthologs for this sequence. And um, specifically, we need this region here in a bad format file because we need to know the, um, the uh, genomic um, position um, of uh, this sequence. And the quickest way to get a, a bad formatted data out of this region is to just select it using the button up here. And, uh, oops, sorry, what that? To see the whole region like this. Okay, and this opens another Eldorado view now only for this region. The region is downstream of the of the IL-10, so we won't get any information about any genes. But that's not what we need. We only need um, a bad file of that region, and we can go to the annotation and analysis view now in Eldorado. And this lists annotated elements in here. We don't have many annotated elements there, transcription start regions, but uh, we can just get the user sequence, so exactly that um, region that we just selected by clicking or selecting it here and redisplaying the page. Now this is added to this very short list. We have the user sequence here and now I can select it for extraction and extract it as a bad file. You could also extract it as a sequence file, but uh, the orthologous the orthologous regions uh, program needs a bad file as an input. So I extract my 1200 base pair region here as a bad file. You see the chromosome, start position, end position, and some um, identifier here. And I save it to my project management. Let's call it IL-10 Enhancer. And I can directly go to the orthologous regions program, which you find here under genes and genomes. Here we have our saved bad file already listed in the list of available files. So I can just select it here. And I need to select the target species. So in which species do I actually want to find a orthologous region? And I just select all of the vertebrates using this control element. Give it some name and then submit it. Now the program, as I said, now does a search in the target um, in the target organisms, although the, the genomes of the target organisms, um, using the um, homology groups. And so it looks for the genes that are flanking our region, so IL-10 and the other gene that is on the other side um, of, of IL-10 and um, tries to find then sequence similarities in this syntenic 
in these synthetic regions and we see that we find matches in a number of our target sequences. There is something here in uh, the chimpanzee here, in the mouse, in the rabbit, etc. Nothing in the horse, but we have dog, cow, pig, and also nothing in the other species that are well, farther away in the um, evolutionary tree. Nothing in frog and zebra fish and, and in the birds. But if we click on the link down here, we can see the result with some statistics. You can actually enter a bed file with more than one region also here. This will take a little longer certainly. Um, but what's uh, important for this type of analysis, if we have only one promoter and want to do the comparative analysis, is what we have down here. So we find eight orthologous sequences. The sequence similarities are actually shown here. And we can directly start a comparative analysis on these sequences, including our input uh, sequence, the, the human sequence certainly, um, using the links here. So either framework or a dial NTF. And I'll show you the framework. So you already saw dial NTF. Now for Frameworker, we have again the same parameters for the selection of, rem of the matrices as we had in um, the previous in the previous programs. Um, apart from that, if we continue here, we have a number of different parameters that let us now define how stringent we want to make a search for the common patterns because we are now going from single transcription factor binding site search to pattern search. Um, the, the Frameworker is, um, if you want to compare what you get from Frameworker to, to dial NTF is in Frameworker you um, see the or the you include the information about the relative positions of the transcription factor binding sites to one another whereas in dial NTF you see them or you include the information about the positions in the promoters so you could say the absolute positions or relative to the transcription starts at relative to the to the whole promoter the patterns of transcription factor binding sites that you can get in framework can actually also be in, at the start of a promoter in one promoter and at the end of a promoter in uh, another of the of the related promoters um, but they need to be in well close relatively close to one another and form a pattern and uh, this um, how the pattern looks like it needs to be needs to be conserved among uh, the um, sequences you have once more a quorum here here we have um, the standard here is set to 8 out of 9, which you can also change. I don't change it change it for now because it's okay for what we want to, to um, achieve here. You can select a mandatory sequence. So as we come from human and we want to see only patterns that include um, the human promoter sequence certainly. And you have a number of parameters here for defining how well, well how much variability you allow in the structure of the patterns among the different promoters. And uh, the most important parameter for that is this. Um, here we allow the two ad ad adjacent binding site in the patterns to be, or the variability actually of the distances between two adjacent bind binding sites to be no more than 10. So for example, you can have a 40 base pairs difference in one promoter and 50 base pairs distance in another promoter. This would count as the same pattern, but if it's 40 in one and 60 in the other, it would not count anymore because the difference is just too, too large. And then we have uh, well, the distance between two elements, so they need to be relatively close to one another, a maximum of 200 if we don't change it, and then a minimum of five to avoid uh, completely overlapping uh, binding sites. Number of elements in the model, well, the model is the pattern of transcription factor binding sites, so we, we need to have at least two binding sites that form a pattern, and we can go actually up to 10 binding sites that um, form a pattern. If you know anything about a specific binding site that you want to include, you can select mandatory binding sites in your model. So this is an additional filter so um, that you get only combinations that include a specific binding site, actually up to five 
binding sites. That's that's possible here. But as we are now, we don't need that because we just want to see what patterns um, we get. You can also have a p-value calculation which you can switch off, uh, switch on. It will um, it will uh, increase the time it takes to calculate. So I don't do it now and just run the frameworker program which will give me first of all an overview of um, the patterns that are found. By default um, details for the patterns are only shown for the patterns with the longest or with the highest number of binding sites. So we actually get patterns with up to seven elements here. Four different patterns are found and for the well, less complex ones we get accordingly um, more um, different models. You can look at the model details by clicking on um, this or selecting this tab. Here we have just a list of the binding sites which in each pattern and you see that they are very similar to one another. You have EV1, SORI here, also here, then you have HOMF and here you have ETSF, but the rest is the same ones more. EPR, PARF, AP1R, AGML, ETSF, the same here. And this is the same for the other ones here. The, this overview here shows you um, the elements or the types of binding sites that you have um, in your patterns and um, you have um, not a lot of variability. So you have obviously alternatively you can have HOMF or ETSF here at the second, uh, at the third as the third element, PARF and or CRAB as the fourth element and all the other ones are the same. Now for a for a graphical representation you can go to the graphical view here. And this similar structure as you saw on the other programs in, in, in common TFs actually. Um, this now shows you the binding sites that are in your most complex models. So in models with seven elements, all of them together. And you see that um, they are, are all limited um, to a well, the center region actually of the promoter here and also to the center region of the other or more or less in the center of the other orthologous um, regions in, um, in the other species. If you change the threshold here, you can go down to six. This doesn't change anything. So we, the, the binding sites that are in, element, in models with six elements are just the same as the one with seven elements. But with five, you get a few more. But still, we are only in the center region here, four, a few more, well, we have a few more out here, three is still mainly restricted to the center region. If we go down to two elements, we get them all over the place. So this is now not stringent enough anymore. And um, so we should have at least um, the models with three elements to get a relatively reliable um, information about what is conserved because um, as you remember if we have a, a pattern here and uh, the same pattern here it still counts as conserved but we want to also to see um, whether we have some information about the relative position um, within um, the promoters, uh, the, the enhancer regions or potential enhancer regions here. Okay, if you want to see the, oh, there's another thing, if you want to see the models, um, the specific models, you can select models over here instead of the matrices and then you can select um, the models here. If we go back to the seven element models, you see um, this pattern here for the model one, this very similar difference here for model two. And here, model three only changes here. Model four also changes only in this region, all the, less, uh, all the rest is actually um, the same. Okay, so taken together, you now have 
three different three different ways how you can uh, do the analysis of um, con transcription factor binding sites with common TFs. You get a low stringency, low selectivity um, overview, which allows you to um, do a number of things manually and 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 scan um, your sequences, supporting you a little bit um, in order to find conserved binding sites. With Dialine TF, you have an alignment which uh, includes then also the transcription factor binding sites with much more stringency and um, and taking into account um, where the binding sites are in the promoter and uh, lastly with Frameworker you're looking for patterns of transcription factor binding sites which can be anywhere in the promoters but need to have the same um, or a similar structure in the different um, promoters which is conserved. Okay, one more thing that I'd like to show you or make you aware of um, before I take questions is our Advent and Year of Year End special. So if you visit us on Facebook, facebook.com slash genomatics, you get information about these special offers um, that we have until the end of the year where you can have, well, reduced prices and um, also sp special combinations of uh, the um, of the programs um, that might be of interest for you. Now, for some questions. Okay, one question is, do we use the TransFAC for the common TF analysis or do we have our own database for it? We have our own database which is called MatBase and uh, well, we'll, certainly we like to think that it's um, at least as good as TransFAC or maybe better, but yeah, it's MatBase and um, MatBase is also, um, well, it's included actually in um, a license that, that you can get. What's the best way, that's another question, what's the best way if I want to look at common TFs across several genes in one species? Also a very good question. Um, in this case I would, I would um, recommend to use gene to promoter because gene to promoter allows you to um, retrieve the promoters of several genes in one go. And you can use the common TFs uh, for that to give you an overview of what is common, certainly. Um, dial and TF is probably not as good because uh, you would ex you probably you wouldn't expect uh, the the transcription factor binding sites to be in similar regions uh, within um, the different the promoters of different um, genes. Also, the alignment of the promoters might not be as good as if you have if you have uh, all uh, the promoters that are related to one another. But you can certainly also use Frameworker, so Frameworker would be, would be very good for this um, in order to find common patterns which then can be um, farther away from the TSS in one promoter or maybe closer to the TSS in, in another promoter. Then there is a question, most of the enhancer for, for the respective gene was a genomatic prediction only, are they tested in wet lab or in animal model? How much prefer, uh, how much perfection of these predicted enhancers are real. Um, this is actually a prediction that we get from public sources and uh, this is not necessarily tested. It's based on a combination of um, histone marks mostly and I think also of DNA is one hypersensitivity regions. So this stands and falls um, with the uh, quality of um, this prediction that we include in our database. Then the question, in common TF are the identified sites based on sequence only or also on chipsec? No chipsec, this is just an in silico prediction of um, the binding sites based on, um, well, experimental binding sites certainly for the, for the definition of the, of, the, of the matrices, but it's a prediction um, that's also done in, in silico. Then there is the question to whether we have methylation data 
um, in our database. Um, no, we don't have methylation data yet. Then the question, is it an online software or to download and install on a personal computer for analysis? It's an online software. You only um, access it using a web browser. So there is no need to um, download the software. Everything is calculated on our servers here. Then we have the question. I'm working on C elegance, and in the example, um, elegance C elegance what was not um, in a, a target species. Um, yes, and this is because I chose vertebrates at the beginning. And um, C eleg you can in principle um, use it as well. It uh, will probably. Uh, whether you will get anything is another question, but C. elegans is is one of the is one of the species that we have in the system. Then we have a question: Are these options active in the trial version? Yes, everything, <laughs> everything that I showed you is um, also active in the trial version. So if you want to um, run a trial version, just go to www.genomatics.de. And I just show you that. On www.genematics.de, you just click on free trial and you enter some information, then you get a trial for one week. And after one week, we send you an email and ask you to answer a few questions, how you liked it and what you maybe didn't like. And uh, if you do that, then you can get another week of free trial, including everything. Um, yes, then we have a question, how much does it cost for one year license? Um, for this, I would ask you to check on our on our um, Facebook site for the special offer that we have. You can get a one-year license now for, for a um, special price. As I said, facebook.com genomatics. And you can go then from here to our shop where we have the special the special offers which include one year um, licenses. And if that is not enough for you, um, you can just um, you can just um, send an email to sales at genomatics.de and they will make you an offer. Okay, so I'd like to thank you very much. Uh, sorry, there's one more question. Can we use the data analyzed using the trial version in publication? Certainly you can. Feel free to do it. It's your data. You can do anything you like with it, whether you use trial version or whether you use, use a, a, um, a li you have a license. The best way to identify common TFs in a different putative enhancer regions given in a bad file? In this case, I would, I would um, use the, um, another program actually, <laughs> which you also have in the system. Let me show here. There is a there is a toolbox, bad file tools, where you can upload a bad file, and you can, among other things, convert this bad file to a D DNA sequence file, and then you can, you can save the DNA sequence file and then run a comparative analysis on these um, um, sequences with um, common TFs or with with um, 
um, framework. Certainly you can all, maybe I should say that as well, all the, all the programs for doing actually the analysis are not only accessible you, when you come from gene to promoter, etc., but you can always um, access them here from, from uh, the um, navigation bar. So we have uh, here on the regulatory pattern definition, you have the dial line TF, you have the frameworker, and you also have the common TFs up here. Okay, I think time is up. So thank you very much for your attention. And so don't forget our Facebook um, page. And um, well, have a good, nice day and have a nice evening.